You think since he and I are both gifted, I'm going to end up like him. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the times young Sheldon addressed real-world issues. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were so unhappy. Because you never bothered to ask. Number 10. Social Isolation Throughout the Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon, we hear that Sheldon wasn't exactly the nucleus of the social scene in his youth. In fact, he's so far from it that he's more like some distant galaxy humanity has yet to discover. My mother never understood that I actually enjoyed being alone. Solitude allowed me to think about important things, like the effect of gravitational forces as you approach an event horizon. Anyway, for the most part, that doesn't seem to bother him. However, in the season two finale, when no one shows up to his Nobel Prize announcement party, suddenly the social isolation hits him hard. A primary feature of quarks is that they're always bonded together. But in that moment, I felt like a neutrino, destined to be alone forever. We're then shown a montage of his future pals in that present moment. It's a sweet reminder that as horrible as loneliness can feel, we can always be hopeful for a light at the end of the tunnel. Thankfully, I was wrong. Number 9. Natural Disasters in 2022, CNN reported that Texas is likely to endure about 140 tornadoes per year. Since it's set in the state, young Sheldon has addressed this natural disaster on more than one occasion. In season one, the family waits out the storm in their bathroom while George and Georgie cover up a window. I'm scared. It's gonna be okay. Georgie, come and get this from the window. On it. Is this my bed? Yeah. Oh, it took me an hour to make it. Indeed, these steps are in line with the CDC's recommended protocols. Likewise, in season six, George and Missy encounter a tornado warning while driving home. Keep an eye out for phone clouds. What happens if I see one? When we get out of the car, we lay down low until it passes over. Get out of the car? Car can get picked up. It's safe on the ground. George guides Missy on safety protocols before they leave their car and seek shelter on the side of the road. Season 7 delves into the aftermath of such disasters as Connie deals with the insurance end of things. I was embarrassed about the insurance thing because I didn't think anything like this was going to ever happen to me. And now I've lost everything. Number 8. Puberty As the Cooper kids grow up, the series explores the ups and downs of adolescence. I guess there's stuff I'm looking forward to. Like what? Going on dates. Boring. Driving. Scary. Getting married. Hopefully to Vanilla Ice. You want to marry a snow cone? While Sheldon grapples with the physical changes puberty brings, Missy and Georgie navigate experiences that are essentially rites of passage for any teenager. As they grow up, their focus changes to matters of the heart, and they even begin dating. You hiding from that guy? No. Oh, I get it. You like him. Shut up. Aren't you a little young for that? How old were you when you started liking girls? Missy also causes quite a stir when she starts asking questions about love and sex during Sunday school. The story delves into the various approaches adults take in addressing the topic. It was a lot of questions. It doesn't matter how many questions. We can answer them at home. I'm sure you can. I just think this is our chance to get in first before they learn it on TV. That is true. Of course, she and Georgie also face heartache, reminding us that rejection always stings. Meanwhile, Connie proves that it doesn't get any easier with age. Number 7. Sexism In Season 3, Missy takes an interest in baseball, but still has to run her fair share of bases to prove herself. After she convinces George to take her for a tryout, she's turned away without being given a fair shot. And why? Why not? I mean, she's a girl. She's got pigtails. Fortunately, Mima bats in her corner and helps her get past that first base. I'm just a girl, but I think that's called a strike. Not bad. We're back. Gotta go. She made the team. However, Missy then faces prejudice from both her male teammates and her female friends. Even Mary's dished some harsh words by Brenda Sparks. What were you thinking? Excuse me? 
My Billy's on that team. Baseball's for boys. Says who? Says everyone. The final straw is when the opposing team deliberately tries to mess up Missy's game. Look, we're not condoning her methods, but we think she got the message across loud and clear. Ah, oh, well, here we go. Eat it! Eat it! Number six, family dynamics. In Young Sheldon, the Coopers largely come across as a relatable bunch. He bailed me out. So you all thought you should keep this from me? Yes. 100%. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. You and you are staying at her house until I say otherwise. There's no shortage of love, but there's also plenty of friction. George and Mary often find themselves tangled in marital woes, fueled by financial stress and the unique challenges of raising a child like Sheldon. I want to be included in decisions about his future. If that means California, maybe I'll go with him. He is not going anywhere. You can go as far away as you want. And if you've got siblings, you'll find yourself nodding along to many of the arguments between the Cooper kids, especially the twins. I would never be able to forgive myself if anything bad happened to you. I hate you. Even Connie, who's estranged from her other children, adds an intriguing layer to the mix. Most young Sheldon viewers could probably watch at least one episode and see their own family dynamics represented, both the good moments and the tough times. Nobody's moving anywhere. Let's just have a nice, quiet dinner. That's it? You're, you're going to make the decision for me? I'm making a decision for us. All right, then. Number five, teen parenthood. In season five, Georgie discovers that Mandy, a woman he's been dating, is pregnant. Sometimes these things ain't accurate. Maybe take another one. Here you go. Two is convincing, but, but three. I'm pregnant, Georgie. This isn't his first brush with teen parenthood, but his first scare turned out to be a false alarm. His response, though not perfect either time, sharply contrasts with his parents, who married because of their own unplanned pregnancy. At no point does Georgie abandon the respective women or tell them what they should do with their bodies. I know it didn't go great the other night, but I meant what I said. I'll be there for you. Georgie, not now. I'm serious. I'll go to baby classes with you. You need to learn that breathing stuff. Okay. Instead, he takes equal responsibility and, especially with Mandy, supports her all the way. The Coopers also really step up for Mandy when her family fails to do so. Georgie made a mistake, but I did not cut him out of my life. You don't know. I don't care. You are her parent. Act like it. So grow up, call your daughter, and make it right. Plus, from what we've seen so far, Georgie seems like a pretty good dad. Number four, mental well-being. In the season two finale, Dr. Sturgis has a breakdown triggered by the Nobel Prize announcements. Tomorrow, somebody will win the Nobel Prize about these particles, not me. But I'm experiencing them firsthand. We find out this isn't the first time it's happened, and he's been sent to a facility for treatment. Mary worries that Sheldon, who's similarly gifted, may also face similar challenges. Meanwhile, her cryptic concerns worry Sheldon. Eventually, they have an open talk about mental health, highlighting the importance of being honest and open about such matters. He was having some issues, but he's getting the help he needs, and I'm sure he's going to be fine. And you think since he and I are both gifted, I'm going to end up like him. Even though Sheldon doesn't face the same challenges as his mentor, he does deal with some debilitating phobias. These fears are caused by traumatic events, such as getting in a car accident and choking on solid food. Through an extraordinary act of courage. For Cyclops, it was the loss of Jean Grey. For Rogue, it was human touch. For me, it was food that required chewing. Number three, identity crises. As we've mentioned, George and Mary hardly live in pure marital bliss. The series explores the impact these conflicts have on their psyche. Did I want to get stuck coaching high school football? Did I want to live across the street from your mother? Did I want to spend my evening getting yelled at by my daughter and my son and my wife? I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were so unhappy. Because you never bothered to ask. For example, George expresses his discontent with how his life has turned out, seemingly setting the foundation for his connection to Brenda Sparks. Similarly, Mary seeks companionship with Pastor Rob, 
But throughout the series, we also witness her struggle to find herself. She's so consumed by the demands of family life that she becomes disconnected from the person she was before marriage and motherhood, often grappling to reconnect with herself. I see a mom and a wife. Okay, that's the hair you already got. Who do you want to see? Oh, um. This ties into her crises of faith, where she wrestles with the discord between her beliefs and what life lays before her. Faith means believing in something you can't know for sure is real. And right now, I am struggling with that. Number two, child of divorce. If you're a child of divorce, you might relate to Sheldon's intellectual rival, Paige Swanson. At first, she's a sweet kid who challenges Sheldon, but when her parents split, she has difficulty adjusting. She loses interest in things she once cared about and becomes rebellious. Everything that used to seem important to me just doesn't anymore. Of course, it doesn't help that although she and Sheldon lead almost parallel lives, she finds it harder to fit in with her contemporaries. Anyway, Paige's sharp left turn following her parents' divorce shows just how deeply unsettling the breakdown of a family can be on a child. You're smarter than Sheldon. Why don't you act like it? Um. I am. If that was true, then how come my pizza's still in my stomach and yours is in the fountain? Just, what good is being smart if you're all alone? We hope she, like many others in her shoes, finds peace knowing that it's not her fault and can find some closure. I bet you think the divorce is all your fault, and now your family is torn apart forever. Did I do it? Did I get under your skin? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Grief Grief is explored in several ways throughout Young Sheldon. Firstly, the series builds up to George's fate, with adult Sheldon often reflecting on his relationship with his father. There's a lot of things I wish I had said to my dad while he was around. That I appreciated him. That I loved him. Which is why I'm grateful for the times I did tell him how I felt. Mary and George grieve together when Mary discovers she's pregnant, only to miscarry soon after. Connie also gives us a rare glimpse at her vulnerable side when she visits her late husband's grave. Even her sassy spirit can't hide her sadness or how much she clearly misses him. Still pissed you for dying. I'm not gonna just sit at home and miss you. I mean, you wouldn't want that. You'd want me to go out and have fun. She even surprises herself with her reaction when Dr. Sturgis puts on Charlie's jacket at her garage sale. It shows us there's no one right way to grieve. Everyone needs to do it on their own terms. I guess I just didn't expect that getting rid of my, my husband's stuff was gonna hit me so hard. Which serious issue do you think young Sheldon handled particularly well? Let us know in the comments. That sounds hard. Yeah. It is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.